Would you spend a year in space? How about a month? Or a day? I don't think I could do even one day. No, no way. That's way too scary. But if you think you could go to space, comment down below. How many brave souls are out there? Me? I'm not even going to skydive. No way in hell. I'm Taylor McWaters, and here are the top 10 classified space missions that went horribly wrong. Yeah, this is why I'm afraid of heights and everything, for that matter. Number 10, Mariner 1. July 22nd, 1962. An Atlas rocket launch was successful at first. NASA's Mariner 1 spacecraft had hoped to be the first to fly by Venus and get ahead of the Soviet Union in this massive space race. Now, after the launch, it didn't take long for operations to quickly go south. The rocket was unable to steer itself and was heading towards a crash rather than the cosmos. Now, there's two things that could happen here. The rocket either lands into the North Atlantic shipping lanes or an inhabited area. Not ideal, so there's no choice other than to self-destruct. $720 million splashed down minutes later. It turns out this was all caused because one person programmer left a hyphen out of one equation. That's how long ago it was, where one hyphen just caused all that damage. Classic. Number nine, Phobos 1. 1998, we'll look over to the Soviet Union for this one. We'll go back and forth. Back in 1998, they launched the Phobos 1 spacecraft to study Mars's moons and even land a probe on Phobos, the largest moon of them. Now on September 2nd, 1998, mission operators lost contact with the spacecraft and they never heard back. Yeah, it just ghosted them and then drifted away in space. That's, that's a bit rude if you ask me. So what went wrong? Where did it go? Well, software uploaded on August 29th. Well, it turns out somebody missed a single character when they uploaded software on August 29th. Again, a single character caused all this chaos. This put the spacecraft in a steering test mode for some reason, which also deactivated the spacecraft's thrusters. So eventually the solar panels couldn't face the sun anymore and it ran out of battery power. And also communication drifted away forever and then just died. That's so sad. Number eight, the second shortest spacewalk. Luca Parmit an Italian astronaut with the European Space Agency faced what's possibly my new worst fear. Here we go. July 16th, 2013, not that long ago at all. During a spacewalk on the 36th expedition to the ISS, the International Space Station, Luca's helmet began to fill with liquid. Not water, but rather liquid coolant. Water would be bad alone, just splashing around in zero G, but liquid coolant, you can't even drink that. Know what I mean? I mean, as if you could drink water in the suit, like it's Looney Tunes. Both are bad. The spacewalk continued for over an hour before Luca was back in the ISS and free from his suit of doom. Yeah, he was fine, but this accident could have been a lot worse. The second shortest spacewalk in the station's history. More than fair. Drowning in a weird liquid around your head? I couldn't even imagine. That's my new nightmare. Yep. Number seven, space workout gone wrong. Look, zero gravity. I can't even imagine how hard it is to stay in shape while you're floating on the ISS, just in space. It's funny to watch astronauts work out while they're strapped down to a treadmill, but it's vital for that return trip later on after the space mission is complete. They land back on Earth and they're like, oh yeah, gravity, oops. You know, gotta keep those legs nice and strong. Working out in zero gravity can have its dangers. Back in 1995, astronaut Norman Thagard was working out, getting his lunar leg day in, doing some knee bends, all that good stuff. But while doing so, one of the straps snapped off of his foot and flew upwards, hitting him in the eye. Yeah, gravity or not, that's gonna leave a mark. Thagard then had trouble looking at light from that point on, which when you're in space, that's really not ideal. It's trying to avoid the sun as it's going around you all day long. Oh, that's exhausting. Steroid eye drops helped Thagard's eye ultimately but it could have been a lot worse. Imagine losing an eye in space. Thor lost that eye in space. You know what I mean? Thor. That's pretty badass either way. Number six, Apollo 1. The first fatal accident in the history of U.S. space flight happened on January 27th, 1967. The first manned mission of the Apollo space program. Now, it happened during a simulated launch, a fire broke out in the command module of Apollo 204 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida, ultimately taking the lives of astronauts Gus Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Caffey. Designed flaws in the hatch door made it impossible to open in time to save the astronaut. So it was honestly just terrible, terrible situation. Apollo 13 faced issues as well in 1970 when an oxygen tank failed. The crew was supposed to head out to the moon, but they had to obviously return once faced with these impossible tasks. Ron Howard did a movie about it called Apollo 13. Done very well, but again, I, nothing can compare to the real situation, I bet. God, that's so scary. Anything like, all these sound terrifying, don't get me wrong, but like the fact they're happening in space or in like a really tight enclosed area. I'm sweating talking about it. Number five, Soyuz 11. It was April 1971 when the Russians launched the world's first space station, Salyut 11. Three cosmonauts aboard said space station spent three weeks observing, conducting experiments, dare 
dare I say, normal space station behavior. But their return trip, however, on June 30th, that's when things took a tragic turn. The spacecraft made a normal re-entry and a normal landing, but when the ground team opened up the hatch, all three cosmonauts had suffocated. See, what happened was a faulty air vent had opened 30 minutes prior when the descent module separated and the cabin just depressurized, just like that. And from that point on, the Soviet and US space programs would now ensure that their astronauts are always wearing their space suits during any phase of any mission where depressurization could possibly occur. Just to be safe, yeah, that's oh, it's terrifying. This is so terrifying. I'm literally sweating doing this list. Couldn't imagine how scary that would be. Number four, Project 1794. This project was created with the goal to build a sort of saucer type aircraft that would be designed to shoot down Soviet attacks. Now the program, which was created in the 1950s, was quite ambitious and had some pretty lofty goals. A team of engineers began trying to build a disc shaped aircraft, but here's the real kicker. They wanted it to be capable of traveling at supersonic speeds at high altitudes. The documents about this project show that they wanted to be able to travel at Mach 4, which is four times the speed of sound, and they wanted it to be able to reach an altitude of over 100,000 feet. At the time, the project was estimated to cost around $3 million, which is around 26 million today. And in the end, of course, the project was canceled in 1961 because the craft failed tests and proved to be aerodynamically unstable, which of course would provide a whole slew of problems going at those high speeds. Yeah, especially supersonic speeds. There goes all of our money and equipment. There we go, just scattered all over the desert. Number three, too fast. We're at this stage in life where Teslas are driving themselves and they're driving people to work while they're just chilling on their phones. Not for me, I'm a 10 and two guy forever. That's hands on the wheel, I'm controlling everything. Cause you never know what technology may or may not do, what choice it may or may not make for you. I don't know. On June 4th, 1996, for example, Europe's Ariane 5 rocket launched successfully, but 37 seconds into the flight, the rocket flipped 90 degrees, just out of nowhere. And the onboard computer triggered the self-destruct mechanism just two seconds after that point. Yeah, it just made that call for us. Rather than the launch that we heard earlier where a human made that call, this rocket knew it was going too fast and it dipped. The investigation revealed that some sort of old code wasn't properly adapted for the new Ariane 5. Old code for the Ariane 4 was used for the new body on Ariane 5. That equals problems. Now in this case, the engineers had decided that specific velocity in question was too high to become a real problem. That was only true for the Ariane 4. So things did not work. You live and you learn. Number two, 2001 Genesis. I've personally never been skydiving before because I'm afraid of heights. I don't think I could ever do it. And I'm also so worried about the parachute not opening. I mean, I know that's an obvious, but it's a very real problem and one that we'll sometimes see in NASA projects, believe it or not. NASA's Genesis spacecraft launched in 2001, but it was 2004 when it faced issues. When the solar wind sample carrying probe was descending back to our home base here on Earth, the parachute shoot never deployed. It just smashed down to earth. Remaining samples were contaminated by the desert air. Other samples were of course destroyed on this impact. It was a whole mess. NASA's failure report later on in 2009 then revealed that manufacturers had incorrectly installed the probe's accelerometers into an inverted position. So the spacecraft thought it was going up when really it was going down. Yeah, it's a big yikes. It took five years to get answers. Nobody parachutes for five years. That's the new rule. And finally, number one, the Challenger disaster. There's an entire series on Netflix about this entire situation. It's hard to watch, but it's way more informative than I can be in, you know, 45 seconds. On January 28th, 1986, barely a minute after the space shuttle Challenger lifted off, a malfunction in the spacecraft's rubber seals that separated its rocket boosters caused a fire. And from that point on, everything happened so fast. The blaze quickly spread up the rocket itself and the disaster led to the deaths of all the astronauts on board, including the life of a teacher, Krista McAuliffe. With it being minus three degrees Celsius, the engineering team predicted some sort of failure, but NASA had already delayed this project multiple times, so they wanted to press on anyways. The disaster resulted in the temporary suspension of the space shuttle program. More than fair. Again, if you haven't seen the documentary on Netflix, it's really informative. It's sad, obviously, but it's good to know. Those are the top 10 classified space missions that went horribly wrong. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters, and I'll see you next time on Most Amazing Top 10. Peace. Take a sip for this one. Number one, you guessed it. Mm -mm -mm. Horribly sad, here we go. <clears throat>